nudge somebody and say he's telling the truth about that. See, our experiences kind of tempt to get answers. Answers we don't have. But we don't make these discoveries in a science lab or an engineering center. But we test our hypothesis in life in the experiences that we live through. Everything David is living through is the experiences that are testing his hypothesis. He doesn't know if he's doing right or wrong. He doesn't know sometimes is this the right Our experiment is one in our experiences. Look at somebody and tell them. Look at the person that said, you know you're looking for answers. You ain't tell them like you know. Look at the other brother that you look at the answers. But let me help you understand something. It's not an experiment if you already know the answer. That's why a lot of things in life we move through quickly because we already know the answer. It's them big things that hit us that are our maturation moments. That God desires for us to learn something. Help me somebody. That's why some things you and I got to live two or three times. Because we didn't learn it. Uh, all right. We didn't learn it the first time. Next somebody say, how many times have you been in this class? All right. <laughs> Help me somebody. You see, we're struggling because we've got to find answers. Now, notice how I say this. We've got to find answers in the experiences that are tearing us up. You don't have nothing but your experiences. And when they are crazy, you feel like you're losing it. And the place where we have to find the answers is in the experience. It tickles me when a whole lot of folks talk about it. I'm going to go and just find them all this. Let me help you. The problem going to be when you get back. My pastor, Dr. Harold Collins, has gone on to me years ago in my early first year of ministry. I was worrying about something, struggling with something. He said, you must learn to rest in the struggle. I never forgot that. Because most of us think what we're looking for is outside of our experiences. I'm going to go on a retreat and just be with God. (laughs) What are you going to do when you're on the boat and the storm comes? Come on now. I I, I, I remember reading the story of Peace Be Still and Jesus on the boat, still in the storm. And, and I knew I was saved. I was on a boat trip with some preachers, and the waters got rough, and I got scared and nervous. Because I didn't like fishing anyhow, but I just went. The boat was sinking. I was getting sick. I went down on the bottom of the boat, and I said, No, we got to hurt. We come out there. Now, I'm a preacher. I'm saved, still to the bone, sanctified to the marrow. But this thing was wearing me out. So I went to get away from it, as if I could get away from it, as if I could get away from it. Really, I was on the boat, as if I could get away from it. I'm going to go in my secret closet. The closet was rocking. And God spoke to me, and then all of a sudden, that fear lifted. I heard Jesus say, peace be still. Now, y'all got to get this. He didn't say, peace be still to the winds and the waves. He said, be still to the winds and the waves inside of me. Once he spoke peace inside of me, Diane, I got up, walked up on top of the boat. Everybody else was about to lose their mind. I was fine. 
Why? Because he spoke into my experience. He spoke to me where I was. Not somebody and say, you need to hear him here. Right here on this pew this morning. Right here on this chair this morning. Right where you are. Let me take it a little further. You see, real reflection will cause us to see the good hand of the Lord upon our lives and cause us to see the success that's breaking forth right in the middle of the struggle. Tell somebody beside you, strength will rise from where you struggle. Oh God, y'all ain't saying like you mean it. Y'all waiting for the Lord to speak to you in the bathroom or to meet you in the backwoods or to meet you at the tactical park. No, God gonna meet you while you sitting in the midst of an argument, while you trying to think of what you have to say to that Negro or that Negro S that has plucked your last and living nerve. When your children have nearly lost their mind, when your body is breaking down and the doctor is telling you what has to be done, when your world is falling down around you, when all around yourself gives way, you find he then is all your help and stay, and you begin to stand back up. Look at somebody, tell them I don't understand it, but I'm still standing. Because of God, God alone. God said, now, <laughs> respect on my name. Don't you know, put some respect. How, David, can you make this claim? How, how can you say this? About, how can you say this? Come up with this. He said, let me help you how I can say this. If you read verse 20 when you get home, he says, the Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. Now, remember, David's old. David's old. And, and let me drop this. At the end of your journey, not the day you die or something like that, but as you get further down the journey, you will think less and less about what you did wrong. And more and more about what opportunities you may have missed. You, you will spend closer you get to God, the more you will move away from self-deprecation. The more you will move away from self-condemnation. No matter what you did wrong, can I see the hands of folk who know you've done a ton of stuff? The rest of y'all hands. Y'all got something you can give them? But the, the longer you stay with God, the more that will be my to be your life. What will be your focus is, what did I miss? What opportunity did I not take advantage of? What did I let pass me by? David says, in this latter part of his life, the Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I'm not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I'm not turning away from his decrees. I've been blameless myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands and his sight. With your help, I can advance against the truth. With my God, I can scale off. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. David said, you know why I'm sitting here reflecting on how I made it and, 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 and how I got here after all the things I've been through? I realized that. Now, y'all got to go slow with me. There is a causality. I got to show up at the school with Sunday, you know, Sunday. There is a correlation, a causality between my righteousness and God's rewards. My being righteous and God blessing me. Whoa. Let me clarify this. He says, let me read it to you.
to you because you may have missed the Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. David says, I've been righteous. I, I stayed righteous with God over the long haul of my life. Now that I'm looking back on us, God, I wish I had some people in here who understand where I'm coming from. That he may not do what I think he's going to do, but my God, I am not going to trade him in. And the longer you stay with God, the more you understand your mistakes were a part of the experiment of trying to figure out what is the will of God for my life. Look at somebody and say, I'm testing some theories, but one theory is a fact, and that fact is that God is, that God is the joy and the strength of my life. I don't have to test that. I may not know which way to go. I may not know what to do in this situation. I may fall flat my face over here, but I believe God no matter what, and God will bless me because I don't leave him. Because I trust in the name of the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. They shall move. Touch somebody and tell them I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot but of I mistakes. Still trust God. But I still, I still trust, trust God. God. See. Walter, let me see if I can look at me. I'm tall, I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm wiser. I got my joy back, my shout back, because I trusted him. He kept me. See, being righteous doesn't always change the outcome, but it does change the way I see it. Doesn't change the outcome. Wait a minute, y'all got to end this. You see, sometimes things will look dark in the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to get this. I don't know how I'm going to get this. Anybody on my screen? Um, yes, yes. This is wearing me out. Mm -hmm. Wearing me out. It's taking me down. I need you to do something. That's the first side to say, you got to get this. You gotta get this. You gotta separate the moments from the moves. You gotta separate the moments. What you going through right now? God has you like a chess piece. Oh God, I feel like talking. No, wait a minute. Let me use let me use another metaphor. Another. God has you like a checker. You're watching other checkers being taken off the board, but God is purposely moving you the way He's moving you, because He plans to get you to the other side of the board so He can what crown you. I need you to slap five with somebody and tell him he's trying to crown me. I got to make this move. I got to go the way. It he's trying to crown right me. Now, but he's moving me so he can crown me. Because his way is perfect. Without flaws. Without error. And his way is flawless. It reaches me. God is moving things. I I'm stuck in the moment. Uh, I can't. Uh, I couldn't sleep last night. I feel sleepy all day. I, I don't feel like this. I can't stop you. You stuck in the moment. Let your righteousness rise. He that. I need my discipleship friends. He that has begun a good work in you. I need somebody who's going through the grab the person beside me. I got a quote now. Now he that has begun a good work in me, in me, in me shall perform it until the day of the Lord. I'm going through a move right now, but he's gonna perfect it. He's gonna complete it. He's gonna take me where I need to go. I'm done, but I got, I, I, I just want to drop this, that I'm done. Anybody being in hell? I 
need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm in the season of moves. Uh-oh, 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 you may hurt somebody. Look at somebody close to you and tell them, say, child, I've learned how to pivot in midair. I've learned how to pivot in midair. I need a pivot praise. I, I need a pivot shout. I need a pivot glory to God because he's moving. Sometimes he's moving you so fast it's blowing your mind. He's moving you so fast you can't figure things out. He's telling you all I want you to do is understand in the experiment called your experience. Your trust in me will open your eyes to see things you've never seen, to understand what you've never understood. Wait a minute, let me be done. I don't know when I'll be back on it, but let me be done. How? How did this shepherd boy burn? How did this shepherd boy from Cherry Hill? How did this shepherd girl from the front end? How, how did this shepherd from a divided home? How did this shepherd boy who, who never found the right relationship? How did he accomplish so much? I I, you know, psychologists and sociologists tell us that we are the product of nature and nurture. Nature is what we're born with, our genes and chromosomes. It is our family tree and history. Jesus lives in your heart, but granddad is in your bones. <laughs> we are the sum product of the generations before us, that's nature. But Ellen, we're also a product of nurture. Nurture, the environment that we live in, the, the world that we interact with, the context of every one of the experiences and situations we've had that taught us and answered the question, I don't even understand what it, should I do? How should I handle this? That's why parents, sometimes you have to make sure your children. Girl, I'm the other. I ain't make up. When I look at my life, slap five with somebody. Tell them I want God to get the glory out of my life. You didn't say it like you mean it. Tell somebody, say, I want God to get the glory out of my life, but I got news for you. I want God to hear me give him the glory for my life. I want to give him the glory for my life. If it had not been for God, I wouldn't be here right now. If it had not been for God, I'd have lost my life. Absolutely. If it had not been for God, I would have gone crazy. If it had not been for God, crazy a long time I'd have been stuck yeah. in bad decisions. But the Lord made a way. But the Lord makes a way. Grab somebody and tell them praise it with me. Let everything, let everything. I've got so much. Thank God for so many mountains and so many open doors. For every trial you brought me over, I got to praise it. Lord, you lift me up. You stood me up. You keep me up. You hold me up. You Don't cut in my video. I'm doing a video. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my video, please. You brought me back to the body and ask him, is this your testimony? That through it all, you've learned to trust in Jesus. I love you, too. Go sit down. Oh, yeah. trust in God. God and God alone desires the truest praise. How'd you get here? He made a way. How did you do it? He made a way. How did you pay the bills? He made a way. How did you get out the mess? He made a way. How did you get happy again? He made you get near 
somebody who you think got a praise out. And I just need you to look at him and say, ain't nobody here but us. Ain't nobody here Come but on, us. Come on, praise God with me like we're going crazy. Come on, praise God like we're going crazy. Come on, come on. Come on, pray God in God alone. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, preachers. Come on, deacons. Come on, members. Come on, people. Let everything, let everything, let everything. God. And God alone. In this experiment called my experiences, collectively called life, I'm trying to find answers. But my hypothesis is, he said, what, what did they tell you? They said, it, it, it wasn't here. Go over to the school of religion and find out what happened. Of course, they didn't know. They said, it'll be here. But that's like it's in the mail. He said, well, how much do you need? I said, Daddy, I need such and such because the scholarship was covering just about everything. I said, man, they won't even take my check. Not that I had that kind of money. <laughs> I wish I had some. Here you joined us in worship and you fall into one of these categories. You don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Or you don't have a church home where you're active, connected, and growing. Just do me a favor. If you're honest with God and with yourself, just raise your hand where you are. I want to say a word of prayer for you today. If you're here and you say, I don't have a personal relationship. I don't know him as my God. I don't have a church home where I'm active and connected and growing. Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you on this Sunday morning. Because right. I do believe that God doesn't do anything by happenstance or coincidence. He puts us where we need to be, when we need to be there, to hear what we need to hear, to become who it is he's called and created us to be. I see you coming. Now for those whom you sent to this your house, that they might hear your voice, hear your cry, and say yes to you. We preached all we can preach, we sung all we can sing, we worship all we can worship. Now, God, we place it in your hands that you might give the boldness and the confidence to say yes to you. For you are God and God alone. Move on the hearts, minds, and spirits of those in this worship encounter. Okay, y'all, so I just wanted to pop in real quick while I'm putting this foundation on my face. I just wanted to let y'all know that the, um, the weight loss journey is going good. It's a process, guys. I didn't get overweight overnight, so it's not going to be overnight for me to lose the weight. And I just wanted to throw that in here in this video. Um, I'm also going to add um, a picture in the back at the end of this video letting you see pictures of my back and how it went down in only a month so you'll see that even when life is not good he's still good because he is still god god we thank you thank you that you are god and god alone we thank you that no matter how the rest of the world and life may seem to be we can turn to you, look to you, and in you we will find hope. In you we will find your name. We expect things to shift. When we speak your name, we expect devils to flee. When we speak your name, we expect power to show up. For you are God and God alone. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. The God who is able to present us before the throne of grace. To the God who sits high and looks low. 
to the God who makes ways out of no way, to the God who has held our hand, to the God who has dried every tear, to the God who has lifted burdens off of our back. Be all glory, be all honor, and be all the praise. In Jesus' name, let the church shout, amen and amen. God bless you. Shake somebody's hand. exactly what your word was or what phrase you will take all week long. And this message, God and God alone, the last installment and put some respect on put my name. respect on my name. Oh, I can't wait. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Oh my gosh. Uh, and I can just say that he was on my street. I've been caught up in a moment. But God truly moves in my life. And, you know, once you get through the moment, sometimes you kind of be like, I'm sorry, God, I didn't trust you more. <laughs> because you truly have made a major, major move uh, in my life. So I just want to encourage someone who's watching on today, you know, don't uh, get so caught up in the moment. But understand. Wow. See, my thing, my brown. I'm going to put it on here. And then I'm going to put it here. Look at that color. See that oh, brown? Yeah, I do. And then I'm going up here. And then I got to go around my forehead, too. See how I like, highlight everything else? Yeah. So it's like a three. It's like... Yeah, okay. And then here, too. Yeah, okay. And then, of course... You know, you always got to blend. You got to blend every damn thing. <laughs> That's the only thing I hate. Is that everything got to be blended. Mm -hmm. Now to blend. See how you see in the harsh line? Mm -hmm. And look, now you don't see it at all. Mm -hmm. See it? How I blended the, the line out? Watch how I blend this line out. See, it's a line right there. Watch how I blend it out with this with the sponge. All right, and then now that does blend it. I can't right now. Now I'm gonna take Rihanna. I gotta go get some. My brown powder. And I'm gonna put my brown powder where I put the brown at. Even the preacher's wife, gold um, makeup, mm -hmm. like her eyes and her, 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 her gold blend. 
Mm -hmm. It's beautiful when I say Yeah, it do. Yeah. Very pretty. Whoever did that, did an excellent job. She probably did it. I got a part that everything you can want or need to keep driving. Crazy busy. I will. I promise. I love you too. Right how she made it? No. Merry no. Christmas, Miss Aldrich. Merry no. Christmas, Jimmy. You finished your shopping? Have you got a chance to start? Two more weeks. You better get to it. You had a meeting on the photo spread with Swerve at 10. The editorial leadership meeting is at 10.30. Then you have a call with Epic at 11.30. What about Let's that? go to this garlic. I don't have any more schedules for today. Okay, great. I'll take it at my desk. Did the DJ confirm that extra mic? He has, and I have you scheduled for a walk through downstairs at 4 p.m. I hope you're going home to see your family for the holidays. You know, I figured I'd stay in town this year. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm excited to spend my first Christmas in New York City. Yeah, I don't blame you. I remember my first Christmas in New York. It was magical. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be here working over the holiday. You want to hang out? My boyfriend's flying in from Dallas. Oh, yeah, well, I'm probably going to be really busy. I get it. <laughs> That's Garrett's assistant. He wants to see you. I was very impressed by the piece you edited on the Miami Jazz Festival. The story was great. The photography was beautiful. Well, I appreciate that. You're not just a talented editor. You're a great leader. I get a feeling that next year's going to be an exciting one for the magazine and for you. Well, I like the sounds of that. <laughs> Speaking of exciting, I got to go work on my speech for the Christmas right. party. I'll, uh, I'll see you there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's my head for week. I love it. I thought a Bible study. Was it? Is that gonna make me read? Are you listening to me? So they're not gonna make you read. No. They won't make you read. They won't make you read. You don't want to read yet. You don't have to. They'll pass. It's really a difference, y'all. Look at it. It's really a difference.